Prior to World War II, people tended to live very close to where they worked. Average commute times were generally around half an hour. People lived within walking distance or used bicycles, streetcars, or buses to commute longer distances. Middle-income households lived in very dense, low-rise living quarters in the business district near where they worked. These places were often dirty and lacked a strong connection with nature. Parks and recreational spaces were limited. The elite few able to afford and upkeep horses or an automobile were the only ones to live further away. This changed post-war with highway development and mass access to the automobile. People could now travel much further in the same amount of time, and car-centric suburbs were made for the modern commuter and were the preferred choice of the middle class. This gave them a cleaner living environment, more privacy, and closer access to nature. As more and more people flocked to the suburbs, the former city centers changed shape as well. Roads were widened to accommodate the lifestyle, and the abandoned residential areas were torn down to become parking lots for commuters. Inner cities became decrepit, only seeing activities during business hours, and becoming abandoned outside of them. Without people to watch or care for these areas, they became places of crime and low-income desperation. As more and more people moved to the suburbs, the highway systems became choked with car commuters, and a once 30-minute commute became 35, then 40, then 45 minutes. Developers swooped in and took advantage in the city centers, building high-rise condos close to business districts and pricing them according to this demand. If you want to live near where you work, it will cost you. Housing prices often reflect distance from the urban core. Low- and middle-income families are forced to deal with the longer commute times. In modern times, we have a growing population of so-called extreme commuters. These are people that travel more than three hours round trip to work per day due to living very far away from their jobs, using ineffective public transit systems that are stretched too far and too thin by suburban development, or from incredible congestion, as anyone who commutes by car into Toronto can attest to. This sort of time commitment on top of work destroys the work-life balance. People get less sleep and spend less time with their families and friends. As a collective, we're unhappier, and we suffer the environmental effects through air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions from our cars. It doesn't have to be this way. We need to build smarter, healthier urban centers that people actually want to live and work in. We need to build upward instead of outward, and we need stricter control on housing prices so that the average family can find a place to live. We also need to ditch our dependence on automobiles. If we can live closer to where we work, we won't need cars. We can walk, bike, or use more focused public transit in our shorter commutes. A better, happier living space is what drew us out of the urban core into the suburbs and it needs to be what brings us back in. We need to bring nature back to the city. People want and need access to nature, parks, meeting spots, and entertainment. We can add this through replacement of our car-centric infrastructure like parking lots and five-lane throughways. The city of the future is simply a more connected, healthier, and happier version of the way we lived before the rise of the automobile.